My name is Keith. If you don't know me, um, I run the website Keith Speaking Academy, here to help you speak better English, give better answers and get a higher score on the IELTS speaking test. Nice to see you here. I hope you're well. I hope you're happy and healthy today. Today, we're going to look at the topic of photos and photography. Do you know how to talk about your favorite photos, photos in your home, how to take photos, cameras, how the photography industry has changed in recent years? Well, today you're going to find out. We're going to learn vocabulary, idioms, language, quite a bit of pronunciation practice today, um, and even some model answers to help you out um, where you, that's you, get to ask me a question about photography and I will try my best to answer it. Great. Very excited to be here today. Thank you all of you for joining. We're going to talk about photos for those of you just arriving. Um, let me just check who's here, who's in the house already. Right. Gyun Van, hello. Amal, welcome. Ashraf and Sana, nice to see you. I love the prince, uh, Princess Diane avatar. KK, hello. Dr. Naishal, nice to see you here, sir. Burhan, sir or madam, excuse me. Amal, Jamila, yo yo, good to see you as again. Hola, BC, good morning. Nice to see you here. So, listen, guys, welcome. We're going to talk about photos, photography, essential vocabulary. We'll be looking at collocations, of course, um, and model answers. And I'll be giving you some part three tips today as well. That's always a challenge in the IELTS speaking test. So just to let you know, right, my, um, well, first of all, thank you very much, all of you in the YouTube community and Facebook community who gave me some advice about the banner for my new fluency course. So I have a new fluency course coming out still on track 25th of October. That's just beep, 10 days away. Fluency for IELTS speaking. It's a course that will really help build your ability to do correct phrasing, chunking, perfect intonation, building your fluency and confidence for IELTS speaking. It's an online course. It will be up on Udemy. Um, and I asked lots of you to help me with the banner, the little, um, well, the banner that you put for each course. I wanted something similar to the last course. So the course I have on Udemy, this one, IELTS Speaking Success Get a Band 7 Plus, it's kind of pink, right? So I wanted something similar with the same little certificate logo, but changing, well, it seems a lot of you opted for the blue color, which was much better. So um, I'm going to decide later today. I've made a little tweak, <laughs> a tweak is a small change. I made a little tweak and um, I will keep you informed about that. So that's the course coming up. Um, right, let's see who else is here. Ali Mir, Tense's lectures are finished. No, Ali, they are not. In fact, the video this weekend is all about the future tenses. In this weekend's video on YouTube, I'm going to show you 10 different ways to talk about the future. Ha ha. Right. Most people think, well, will going to No, my friend, there are I'm going to show you 10 ways to talk about the future. So the grammar tenses is still going on this Sunday. Look out for that video. Ha <clears throat> I'm in my new suit. Yeah. Great, isn't it? Because it's cold in autumn. It's getting really nippy. Nippy is chilly. Chilly is cold, yeah? It's getting nippy. And it's not a suit, Yo-Yo, although it looks like a suit. Some people think this is a tie. <laughs> it's not a tie. It's just a jumper with my nice white shirt. Yes. Sebnem from Azerbaijan, welcome. I hope uh, things are working out in your country. I hope things are getting better. Let's uh, fingers crossed for you there. But if you're here today, that's great. Sudin from Karela. Nice. Thanks for joining us. That's fantastic. And Ashraf is also from Karela. There you go. Popular destination. <laughs> Great. So um, another thing, by the way, 
by the way, tomorrow, Friday, is lucky draw day. Uh -huh, right? Tomorrow, we're doing every Friday a lucky draw on Facebook. So listen, if you're not in the Facebook group, excuse me, come and join Keith's Mastermind Community. It's a Facebook group for IELTS speaking. And every Friday, I give away for free to one person my course, my IELTS speaking success course. So all you have to do is come onto the uh, Facebook group on Friday, look for the lucky draw post, comment, and then you enter the lottery. And on Saturday, after 24 hours, on Saturday, I will pick, or I have a special software to pick one person um, who will get the course. Fantastic. By the way, when you comment, please do remember one comment per person. Some people, by mistake, maybe, put in two or three comments. Don't do that because I'll take them out. Um, I read all of them. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's one comment per person so that it's fair, right? Of course. Okay. So looking forward to that. That's tomorrow. Lucky draw. Nice. Brilliant. <laughs> Let me see how you're doing. Right, Mavidiva, first time. Great, welcome Mavidina, good to see you. Guys from Afghanistan, welcome. Lovely to see you here, guys. Uh, Tijani from Nigeria, lovely, it's great. I've noticed more and more people coming from Nigeria <clears throat> onto the class, that's nice. And Christina from the Philippines, great. Asifa from Bangladesh, <laughs> welcome, sir. Right. Excellent. So um, moving on today, let's come back to photos but um, up here, talking about photos and photography, right? OK, so I'm going to start, as I usually do, having a look at um, some essential vocabulary. Let's take the photos away. And I'm going to begin actually by testing you. <laughs> Right. Let's see. I would like for you to try and fill in the gaps in these sentences using words related to photos. OK, let me see if I can just make this a bit smaller so it will all fit on the screen. Will that all fit on the screen? <laughs> Not quite. I'll have to do this. I'll have to make it a little bit shorter. OK, so you've got five questions, right? I'll just read them through and I want you to put the number and the word. And then I'm going to look at pronunciation because it's so tricky, this pronunciation. So number one, I snap shots all the time to snap, right? To take shots. I snap shots all the time. I'm an amateur, ba ba ba. I have a knack for taking good ba ba ba. A knack is a skill or a talent, right? Number three, great. Keep your answers in the comment box. Fantastic. I'm following a blah 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 course online at the moment. Number four, I look terrible in photos. I'm not at all. Beep. How do you remember all that information, right? You must have a memory. Right, I see you've got some answers coming in. Right, we've got for number one, photography. Oh, I'm not sure about that. Number three, photography. Okay. Number four, some people, Kekeletso has got photogenic. Okay, good. Frederick has also got photogenic. Lakshmi has. Let's share Lakshmi. Lakshmi's put everything in there. Lakshmi has got photographer, photos, photography, photogenic, photographic. Right. Lakshmi, spot on. Spot on. Well done. So <clears throat> let's do this. I snap shots all the time. I'm an amateur. Right. I'm an amateur photographer. Right. Photographer. I'm an amateur photographer. Notice that we emphasize the to. To. Right. To. So this is difficult because it's it looks like pho 
photographer. It's not. It's f. It's the schwa. F. To. Gr. F. Right. F photographer. The to is stressed. So often the the vowel before is usually a, a schwa. F. F to. And the to because you stress it longer. So not just ta, but ta, photographer, photographer, right? So you've got three schwa's, f, gra, th, and one ta, quite long, photographer, photographer. Bit louder. That's it. Great, photographer. Okay, excellent. Well done. <laughs> I have a knack. Remember, knack is a skill or a talent. Okay, I have a knack for taking good photos. That's right. Or photographs. I'm going to use the complete word, but it's absolutely fine to say photos. Photographs. Photographs. So the stress is on the pho. So therefore, the T-O becomes not to, but t, t, photographs. Again, the stress on the pho, you make it a bit longer, right? Photographs, yep, photographs. And when you stress, it's a bit like punching. It's boom, boom. It's a quick jab. Photographs, photographs. Photography, photography. <laughs> right, get the stress really, really good. Great. OK, so I'm following a. This one, you got it right. Photography. Photographer, photography. It's very, very similar to number one. Right. But just the last vowel changes for photography. Photography. Nice. Say it again. Photography. Let's put it together, though, in context, right? A photography course. A photography course. I'm an amateur photographer. Nice. Good photographs. Black and white photographs. Good. OK. This may sound simple, right? But it's really important to practice and practice and practice so you get it automatically. So in the test, you're not thinking about it. It's just automatic. I look terrible in photos. <laughs> I'm not at all photogenic. It's a je, photogenic, which means if you're photogenic, you look good in photos. If you're not photogenic, you look terrible in photos photogenic and because the stress is on the je genic it's a pho to genic photogenic there's a secondary stress on the pho at the start so it's not th it's pho pho to je nic photogenic 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 i'm not at all photogenic can you hear the stress and the rhythm? I'm not at all photogenic. Yeah, nice. Well done. Lovely. Brilliant. Let me come up here. How do you remember you all that? You must have a photographic memory. Photographic. And the stress changes again just to confuse you. We do this deliberately in English just to confuse the whole world. Why do they change the stress? Photo. Again, like photogenic, photographic. So it's photogra, make it longer, photographic. Right, all together, photographic memory. Good, I have a photographic memory. Nice, again, feel the rhythm. I have a photographic memory. Lovely. Very nice. Good. I'm impressed. Good pronunciation, right? So ju just to summarise, 
<clears throat> okay, so we've got photographer, photographs, photographic, sorry, photography, photogenic, and photographic. So an important part of vocabulary building is word families, right? These are word families. Um, some of them are nouns. Photographer is a noun. Photographs is a noun. Photography is a noun. Photogenic is an adjective. Photographic is an adjective, right? So these are all word, part of the word families. It's so important when you learn words, learn the word family. Number one, because very, very quickly, you can expand your vocabulary with just one word, right? Photo, but you can expand your vocabulary hugely. Secondly, it's really important, the pronunciation, because very often the stress changes in the different word family words. Um, <clears throat> you know, brothers and sisters are different. So often the nouns and the adjectives change, the stress changes. So really work on pronunciation as well. If you can get most dictionaries nowadays have an audio button so you can hear the word as well. <clears throat> okay, brilliant. Good. That is just some basic vocabulary we need to sort out. I'm going to have a quick look at collocations with you, right? And I did ask if you're on Facebook, I asked you to share some collocations using the OSDIC tool, right? Um, it's one of my favorite tools for doing collocations. If you're not sure, a collocation is where you've got um, collocation is two words or three words that commonly go together. And if you don't know Ausdic, um, go and check it out. Um, oh, look, looks like Halloween's coming. Surely not yet. But if you go to um, www.ausdic.com, it's a collocation dictionary. So you could, for example, just type in photo, right, and see what comes up. And there enough, sure enough, you've got adjectives, old, recent, black and white. Um, you, you've got verbs, right, to get a photo, um, to take a photo, pose for, develop. Develop photos. That's so old fashioned. We don't develop photos nowadays unless you're a professional, right? Blow up, enlarge, crop, mount, publish, make a photo. So basically, Ozdig is, is a great tool, right? It's really good for picking up some nice um, collocations. So yesterday you shared quite a lot with me. Um, I'm just going to go through a few with you today that are really common, right? So we've got, first of all, to take a photo of someone, right? Take a photo of, of, not of, of. Take a photo of my family. I like to take a photo of the mountains, okay? Notice as well as take, we can shoot a photo, to shoot a photo, or to snap a photo, okay? To shoot a photo or to snap a picture or a photo. To shoot is a bit more professional, but you can certainly use that when you're shooting photos, um, even if you're only an amateur. To snap a picture is very, very casual, informal. So professionals don't snap photos. You and me, maybe, we're not very, si well, I'm not very serious about photos. To snap is just more casual, right? It's, it's a more relaxed way we use it very casually. So if you're out in the street, you'll snap some photos of the birds. <clears throat> okay. But notice I talked about word families. So shoot is a verb, but it's also a noun, shot, to take some shots. I've just taken some shots of the, the trees outside, right? Or a snap. So snap is a verb, but it's also a noun to take a snap. I've just taken some snaps of my family, right? Look at these family snaps, right? So some nice collocations you can use there. Great. Um, when you're standing in front of a photo, <laughs> to pose <clears throat> for a photo. To pose, so to pose, right, you know, is some people like to pose. Some people go, oh, oh, hmm. 
Mm. Right? That's strike a pose. To pose is to put your body in a special position. Some people like to pose for a photo, right? Be really careful with the prepositions. To pose in? No, 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 no. To pose for or for a photo. For a photo. It's a great sound, isn't it? What a strange sound. For a photo. For a photo. For a photo. It's losing sense. For a photo. <laughs> to pose for a photo. I love to pose for photos. Actually, I don't. I hate posing for photos. Some people love it. What about you guys? Do you guys like posing for photos? <laughs> I hate posing for photos because I'm just not so photogenic. <laughs> Nice pose is great. So, so I'm good at posing for pictures. Nice, like it. I'm good at posing for pictures. Exactly, perfect. Kekelitso. Binesh says, I pose for a photo with a smile. <laughs> Brilliant. I like to pose photo session. Good. <laughs> Brilliant. Good. Now, we can also talk about different kinds of photos, digital photos, colour photos, black and white photos. Somebody here in Spain said, Hola, Keith, ¿qué tal? ¿Por qué? Why? Why do you say black and white? It's white and black. They said it's white and black photos. Blanco y negro. White and black. And I said, no, no, no. Well, you can say white and black, but it doesn't sound right. The collocation in English is black and white. Why? I don't know. Maybe the English like to do everything opposite to everybody else. <laughs> but we say black and white. It's like fish and chips. You don't go into a shop and say, can I have some chips and fish? Some what? Chips and fish. Oh, you mean fish and chips. <laughs> black and white, right? Black and white photos. That's the collocation. Colour photos, digital photos, maybe paper photos you can talk about now. Some people still like paper photos. If it's good quality, a high resolution photo, right? Nowadays, these really nice phones, they do take high resolution photos. Yeah. Photo opportunity is a really nice collocation, right? Having all the family together for my birthday was a great photo opportunity. It's lovely. I love that expression, a photo opportunity. And notice there's an insertion here. We put a w in the middle. Photo opportunity. Because it's o and o. O w. O w. Photo opportunity. Can you see there's a w there? Photo opportunity. Getting the family together was a great photo opportunity. Once you start hearing this, right, you'll start producing it as well yourselves and improving your pronunciation. Lovely. Capture the moment. That's a common collocation. And I know a lot of you yesterday talked about capturing the moment. To capture is to catch, right? It just means to catch, to catch the moment. Capture the moment is better. Photo editing, that's very common these days, right? When, when you photo edit photos, you can use filters, you can crop, which is to cut the photo. Photo frame, photo album is another one. We still have photo albums. Even though the old fashioned books have gone, in our um, phones and computers, we have photo albums, right? <clears throat> Great. What else have we got? Oh, Chad, we have a photo we have a photo session later. Right. You look lovely, the couple of you there. Great. Chad, you've got a photo session, which is a bit like when you're well, for example, when you're getting married, you'll have a photo session, right? Absolutely. Let's put that one in. That's a nice one. Just wind it up. Photo session, which is probably, I mean, that's normally with a professional photographer, right? Great. <laughs> yes. Great. Anything. I don't like colour photos. <laughs> Posing for photos is not my cup of tea, says Ishmit. 
Right. It's not my cup of tea, to be honest. Right. Naznin as well says, I hate posing for photos. Right. But Nazilla, right? Now, Nazilla says, I like posing for photos in a natural way. But how do you pose in a natural way? That's difficult because posing is, <laughs> it's a bit artificial. Nazilla, you'll have to teach us how to do that so we can do it. Finally, to be in focus or out of focus, right? Again, really notice the preposition. So when you're learning vocabulary, focus on what I call the grammar of the word. The preposition's so important to be in focus, to be out of focus, right? Make sure your pictures are in focus most of the time. Sometimes you can have the background out of focus and the foreground in focus, right? That depth of field, apparently, that's what they call it. Yeah. So great photos, some nice collocations there. Brilliant. So we've looked at collocations, vocabulary. Um, I did ask the Facebook group a question yesterday, but I want to ask all of you on YouTube, what kind of photos do you like to take, right? What kind of photos do you like to take? Let me know in the comments downstairs, <laughs> down below. <laughs> Let's have a look what we've got and I'll come up a little bit. Right. Hedya, yeah. landscape, yes, question mark. Landscape photos, good, yep. Amanda, photos of tigers. Holy moly. Wow, that's great. We don't have many tigers in Spain, but that's nice. So these are photos you like to take, right? You're taking photos of tigers. Isn't that dangerous? <gasps> don't get too close up, right? This is good landscape. Now, remember, that Saeed, this is fantastic because this helps me... Um, raise an interesting point because a lot of people yesterday yesterday said landscape i like taking photos of landscape right landscape because you're talking generally you want to put it in the plural landscapes right i like taking photos of landscapes it's like do you remember we talked about animals i like tigers we don't say i like tiger no i like tigers generally speaking like all of them I like taking photos of landscapes, right? Great. Thank you, Saeed. That's great. Frederick, portraits and macro something. <laughs> Again, portrait, you, you're talking generally. So you want to say photos. I like to take or I like taking photos of portraits, right? Family gathering. What's the correct answer? So, Haila. Family gatherings, that's the one, right? Great. Great. What else have we got? Okay. <laughs> Portrait photos. That's interesting you've put an E. You're probably thinking of like potato and tomato it has the E, right? But photos, no. Portrait photos, but great. Hamid Reza, great with the S. You've got the S, nice one. Nabila, I like to take a selfie photo. Nice. So here, because you've got a, it's okay. I think normally it's more natural to say, I like to take selfie photos. I think that's better, but you could use a. Right, deep. I love taking photos of wildlife, right? Fantastic, great, wildlife. Nice. Candid shots. Yeah. Okay. Quite a few people have talked about candid shots. So being very kind of, I'll just help you there, Juanita, with your S. <laughs> right. Nature, breathtaking sceneries. Now, breathtaking sceneries. Yeah. Sceneries is an, an unusual one. Um, I'm going to put it in the singular because we don't, it's not normally countable. There are times, and people do use it countable, but I think it shouldn't be countable. So breathtaking photos of scenery, right? 
um, or scenic views, you could say. Okay, I'm going to look at that. Let's have a look at some of the uh, the things I've put up here, just to share a few ideas with you. Let me be, bring these up. What kind of photos do you take? <clears throat> I tend to take, or I like to take, uh, landscape photos. Yep. So landscape, the mountains, the trees, outside nature. Portrait photos like this. Cityscape. We also have cityscape or seascape, right? You could also have seascape photos. Um, you'll notice, right, it's the same vocabulary as art, pictures and paintings. So you can use this same vocabulary for photos seascape, cityscape, selfies, group photos, family photos, um, a few of you have said, daily life photos, that's nice, yeah, wengsut, that's great, daily life photos, photoso, the new Japanese word, photoso, daily life photos, yes. Um, you can say, I like taking pictures of, I like to capture, I like to photograph. Oh, so notice a photograph as well as a noun can be a verb, right? I like to capture or to shoot, of course you can say, or snap maybe. And what, what, what can you do? Well, I like to photograph cities, nature, people, animals, spontaneous moments, right? Maybe that's like the candid shot. So spontaneous is not planned. Just It just happens, right? So it's not planned. Let me just make that clear. Spontaneous equals not planned. <clears throat> spontaneous. Spontaneous moments. I love being spontaneous, right? Sometimes it's good to plan, but when you plan, sometimes life gets a little bit boring. You're always doing the same thing, same time every day. Now and again, it's great to just break the routine, be spontaneous. What a great word, spontaneous. Be spontaneous and do something different, right? Go for a run in your shorts in the middle of winter under the pouring rain. It's just great. So spontaneous moments, capturing spontaneous moments with a camera can be a lot of fun. Great. Um, everyday life, everyday situations, food, right? If you're a foodie, so many people are shooting food photographs nowadays. It's just unbelievable. Instagram, Pinterest, they are flooded with food photos. Different scenery, right? So ah, so this is it. Scenery, I would put as an uncountable. Different scenery. Or you can say different scenic views. Because view, you can count. Yeah? You, you can count views. Let me take that up. So different scenery, different kinds of scenery, or different scenic views. That's the right collocation, right? different scenic views. I like to snap different scenic views. Say that fast. I like to snap different scenic views. And notice, right, when you're speaking like this, you don't have to always speak in long sentences, right? You don't always have to say, I like to snap different scenic, I like to snap different scenic views. It's difficult, right? In natural spoken English, we phrase, we use phrasing. I like to snap different scenic views. That's the way we do it. Um, the phrasing is not, I like to snap different scenic views. Not really. The phrasing is the chunk. I like to snap different scenic views. So you chunk with the collocations. And this phrasing, by the way, I'm doing a plug. This phrasing is what I teach in Fluency for IELTS Speaking, right? The new course. It's all based on phrasing correctly, right? I like to snap different scenic views. And once you learn to phrase properly, your fluency just goes up a lot, lot more. Anyway, <clears throat> just to let you know, <laughs> different scenic views. <clears throat> I'm camera shy. 
Are you camera shy? If you don't like to be in photos, you are camera shy. Shy as in timid, yeah? Great expression. And photos that give me good memories. A lot of people talked about um, bringing memories, not bringing. They give me memories or bring back good memories, right? So just be careful with the collocation again here. <clears throat> okay, brilliant. Good. Let me check in with you. <laughs> indeed, Vedant, indeed. Great. Different snick views. <laughs> oh, yes, this is nice. This is uh, great. Hadri says, I feel so happy when I shoot my children playing together. Together. I know what you mean. Yes. Great. Uh, Saeed says, I am not into being in the centre of attention. Very nice expression, right? Be the centre of attention. I don't like posing. I'm not photogenic. I don't like being the centre of attention. Lovely, Saeed. Nice expression. Very nice. Okay. Excellent. So we've looked at collocations. We've looked at that question. Um, I'm going to move on. And let me see. I'm going to move on next. Oh, I've got a little video to share with you. Now, um, I'd like you to watch a video. It's quite short, three minutes or so. Um, and it's going to give you some ideas about how to improve your photos. So if you're an amateur photographer, photographer like me, right? I'm an amateur photographer. I love photography. I love taking photos. I love going out and snapping trees and mountains and lakes. And I always try to take better photos, but I don't really know how. I'm not very good. Um, so I have lately, I have been looking at some videos and websites to help improve my photography. So I'm going to share with you a little video I found <clears throat> about how to improve your photography. But first of all, um, I'm going to show you some questions because before you watch, I want you to focus on these questions, right? Let's put them here. <clears throat> So this is a masterclass and it's by a guy called Stan, Stan the man. He's to, he does a photography masterclass and I'd like you to try and fill in the words below. Let's just have a look at the words here. So change blah, 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 which means to use a different angle, right? The angle is the direction. Is it up? Is it down? Is it across? What's the different angle? Um, shoot bum above or bum below. What's the missing word? Give your photos a sense of something, meaning proportion or balance. Use something out of nature or man-made ones. What can that be? Something out of nature or man-made ones. What is that? Put your photos blum of focus, the blum effect, what are the missing words? And finally, use depth of blank. Okay, so um, just have a quick look at those and let's see. Well, let's have a look just to, yeah, this will help if I just change a few, share a few ideas. Change the way for number one says pretty, pretty, love the handle. Pritika says change attitude. And Mole says, change your direction. Okay, none of these are correct. They're not correct. You'll have to listen carefully. Um, number three, sense of humor. Now, sense of humor is great, but it's not the correct answer here. Um, great. Lawrence says, number one, change your posture. Mm, great answer, but it's not correct. It's not correct. Number five, out or blur. Number five, put your photos out of focus. The blur effect. Almost, sir. Almost. Number four, somebody says, Gautam says, use filters out of nature or man-made ones. Now, man-made filters, yes, but a natural filter. Oh, maybe. Gautam, it's wrong. It's not the correct answer, but it's a very good idea. Yeah, some nice ideas. 
Shakun says angle for number one. Good idea, but not correct. <laughs> number four, Nazila says objects. Could be objects. Right, you've got some good ideas, right? You've got some good ideas. Let's get into the video and see. We'll come back and look at the answers here. <clears throat> okay, where is the video? Let's start. Let's watch. Yo, check it out. It's Stan, the man, your man in Manchester. So welcome. You know, a photo is like a moment in time captured forever. And this is my masterclass. Yo, in it. Yo, so check it out. So this, my masterclass, is all about how to take better photos, in it. Great. So listen, all with a little, little phone. They are little, aren't they? I'm going to give you five, that's five tips about how to take better photos. Tip number one, right, instead of taking your normal shot like that, which is just dumb, of a, of a bottle, you can change perspective, right? Change the angle or the perspective. You can shoot from above like that. Or you can shoot from below like that. Or any different kind of angle. Change perspective. Tip number two. Hey. Tip number two, my man, is all about symmetry. Now, symmetry means when two things are similar or not similar, but the same on both sides. For example, right, if we've got over here, we've got some, what have we got? We've got some candles, we've got the bottle. Instead of just shooting, right, set it up with a bit of symmetry. You've got a candle here, candle here, and a glass right at the front. That is a nice bit of symmetry. You've got two things the same on either side. Lovely. I cut off the top. That was deliberate, of course. <laughs> Here, tip number three is to use frames, like a frame, like the glass frame or a picture frame. So instead of taking your normal shot, you take your object, put it on the floor, right? A bit unconventional. And then we use the frame of the chair legs, a bit like that, and Boom, you've got it. Yo, check it out, tip number four, right? If you're gonna take a shot, use lines. Lines is something out of nature or man-made that gives you a border or a line in your picture. So, instead of taking like a view of, come with me, a view of like the buildings over there, just like that, that's a nice boring shot. Take a line, like the windowsill or the curtain and then shoot it. Let's take the windowsill, the window, <laughs> the curtain. Boom. It gives it a natural line, breaks up the picture. Lovely way. Nice. Next tip. Yo, tip number five, right? Yeah, is to put your picture out of focus. Be a bit blurry. Right, you don't want it crystal clear all of the time. Now, you can do that. We call this sometimes the, the depth of field, where something in the near, in the foreground, is in focus, but in the background, it's out of focus. But you need a good camera for that. If you don't, then you can just add it when you're photo editing or photoshopping. You know, when you're adding filters and changing stuff, that's when you can do your in focus and out of focus, blurry effect, and that's it. That, my friends, is my master class taking better photos. Check it out, in it. Cut. Cut. <laughs> oh, Stan the man, Stan the man. What would we do without Stan the man? What a great teacher. Brilliant. So, 
That's interesting, right? Now, Stan the Man, like me, doesn't know much about photos, but <laughs> I've got the wrong accent, but he's um he's learning quite a lot of some interesting um ideas, right, from Stan. So excellent. Let's come back. <laughs> I keep going into this London Cockney accent. All right. Sorry, get the right accent, get my Manchester accent back. So let's come back. Change number one. Change. <laughs> Change what? Change. Let's see who's got it. Let's see who's got number one. What was it? You did. Most of you got it, right? Yep. Sid, you got it. Nice one. Perspective. Change perspective. So the perspective you can talk about when you're talking about photos is just the angle. Um, different perspectives. I like photos that have different perspectives. It makes them more interesting and vivid. Yeah. Shoot. Uh, number two, shoot. Bum. What is it? Who's got the answer? Shoot. Da, 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 da. Corner view. Change corner. Change view. Yes, bin, but not corner, but view. Yes. Right. Number two was shoot from. Yep. Remember, we talked about the grammar of words from above or from below. Actually, let me do it this way. This is a better way to do it. From above or from below. That's it. I'll do the same here. It just makes it a little bit clearer, I think. From above, from below. Number three, give your photos a sense of... A sense of pretty, you've got it. A sense of symmetry. So where you've got, it's similar. <laughs> it's hard to describe, right? Um, if you cut it down the middle, you've got the same on both sides, right? Symmetry. It's a difficult word to spell, but well done. You've got the spelling spot on, pretty. S-Y-M-M-T-R-Y. Symmetry. Great. It's good to use photos in symmetry. Gives them a sense of proportion, a sense of balance, a sense of symmetry. Notice all of these collocations, a sense of symmetry. I like photos with a sense of symmetry. I took a photo last week with a lovely sense of symmetry, right? Nice language. Number four. This was tough, number four. What did you get for number four? Number four, number four, number four. Anybody? Yes. Okay. I'm just choosing ones who've got one answer. But right. Bhavna. Great. Bhavna. I love that picture there in the hospital. Line. Great. That's it. Use. It was actually lines, right, in the plural. Use lines out of nature. So sometimes like a tree gives you a line or a river can give you a line but man-made ones like the uh, the curtain i got confused with the window sill and the window frame and the curtain <laughs> not me stan sorry stan got confused not me mm. number four lines number five put your photos now what's the preposition let's have a look has anyone got it i can share lines line lines let me come right down Number five, put your photos. Right, we've got it. And we've got the right spelling. At Oh, where have you gone? Come back. Oh. Here we go. So now I was going to share yours um, because you got it right. Put your photos out and then blurry. Yeah, great. Thanks, Sonam. Out of focus. So be careful with that. Well, you saw it earlier. Out of focus, right? Spot on. Or we call it the blurry effect, B-L-U-R-R, -R, double R, the blurry effect, when it's a little bit out of focus. And of course, the last one was depth of field. That's right, depth of field, which is where you have the picture in the foreground, in focus, in the background, out of focus. Fantastic. Well done. Brilliant. That's it. That is Stan the Man. If you want his um, tips, by the way, I'll put these in the notes. Um, Stan's not a professional photographer. He actually got these tips from a lovely website, HubSpot. Um, 
it's about taking good pictures and some really nice phone tips. So I will put that in the the notes for today's class. Remember, if you want to see the notes from the class today, in about um, four or five hours later after the class, you can go to the website. It's keithspeakingacademy.com. I'll just put it up here so that you can see it. Um, go to the free live lessons spot over here, right? Um, and you can go there and you can just download oops, get rid of that, pop-ups. <laughs> you can just go there and download over here the, the stuff, right? That was last week's class, change. We've got co-education, mobile phones. You can either download, but if you're on your mobile phone and you just want to read it, just click on the uh, click to read lesson. And now you can actually just follow, get the information directly right directly from the the website so it gives you all the language you can just read it practice some phrases great so it's all there on the website it's the speak the keith <coughs> speaking academy.com super brilliant so let me come back where was i i think it's time for a cup of tea <laughs> Oh, keep hydrated. <clears throat> I can feel my throat, my um voice getting deeper and deeper as the class goes on. <laughs> How are you doing? You doing all right? Great. Are you ready for some part three tips? I've got a couple of tips for part three that I'd like to go through. Looking on at the of uh, the the the, uh, the topic of photo photos <laughs> photography. <laughs> Like cup of tea. Great. Good. Hong says, yes, let's go. Brilliant. Let's go. Let's turn off that ticker at the bottom. Okay, part three tips. Let's jump straight in. <clears throat> now then, last week, if you remember, we talked about part three, um, developing your answers. It is really important to develop your answers in part three. Don't overthink it right sometimes people try and think of three or four things to talk about i actually think you should just focus on one thing right choose one focus just one main idea get the one idea and develop that idea it's much easier you don't have to think so much right um, just get one idea but then with that idea go deeper and deeper don't plan too much because it doesn't sound natural, right? Sometimes, you know, students will have an introduction. They talk about an example. They have a conclusion. It's almost like an essay and it's clearly too memorized. It's not natural. So plan a little bit, but not too much. Try and talk as natural as possible, right? So let's take, for example, some common question types. And I looked at this last time. We looked at um, change, right, last time. How does something change? This is a very, very common question type. It's used with many different topics. Um, so, for example, how has the way we take photos changed in recent years? Now, you can break your answer into three simple parts, and I did this last week. You can talk about the past, the change, and now. The way we take photos. In the past, it was like this. Now there has been a change. And now what we do is this, right? Very simple three steps. You can also, of course, then add a reason because. So that helps you dig deeper and give some examples because that helps you go deeper and deeper. Now then, this is a kind of a formula, right? And this is really important. This formula is great for practice. So when you're practicing, you can practice something like this, right? But in the test, be natural, right? Don't, you haven't got time to think, oh, number one, past, oh, 
a reason, an example. You haven't got time to think of the different parts. But in your practice, you can practice this. And what you're doing is you're making it automatic so that when you're in the test, you can do it more automatically, right? So, for example, right, if you think of a football team, um, last night I was watching Ted Lasso on Apple TV. Ted Lasso is a fantastic series about an American coach coming to the UK to teach this football team, to coach them. But in the football team, right, the, what they do in their practice is they practice kicking the ball, kicking the ball, kicking the ball. Then they practice passing, passing, passing. So they have some set motions that they practice a hundred times, right? They practice again and again. Why do they practice a hundred times? So that when they're in the game, they're not thinking. It's just automatic. And it's the same with IELTS speaking, right? When you're practicing, you want to do this, this, a hundred times. Practice your answers not the same answer exactly, but the same format, right? Lots of times. So that when you're in the test, it's almost automatic. You don't have to think about number one, number two, number three. It just comes more automatically, okay? So this suggestion over here is for your practice to help you get more automatic in the test, if that makes sense. Now, Here's an example, right? Just to make it clearer, if I take this kind of template, so the past, the change, now, we could, for example, say something like this, right? Well, so this is how have has the way we take photos changed? Well, in the past, um, we used to use these big clunky cameras and we would have to take maybe 36 photos and then develop them. But recently, nowadays, there has been a huge change. Things have changed a lot. Now, we can see people taking photos with their mobile phone. It's much smaller and easier. And I think this change, right, is due to technology. It's due to companies like Samsung and Apple producing high-quality cameras in their phones that take high-resolution photographs. For instance, there are even the media, the big media outlets, the newspapers, they use photos and footage that have been taken with a mobile phone, right? So I'm practicing, I haven't memorized the answer, but I'm using this formula to help me develop and dig deeper. Do this a hundred times. <laughs> Do it with all of this kind of question, right? And um, with the change question. And then in the test, you'll be so much more confident to, to talk naturally. But the key is talking naturally. Okay, on the topic of talking naturally, model answers. This is your chance to ask me any question you like on the topic of photos. And I will try and give you one or two model answers answers. The name of the show, uh, Pritika, Ted Lasso, <laughs> if you want to see it. It's on Apple TV. I don't know if you can get it anywhere else. Ted Lasso is fantastic. So funny. <laughs> hey, Zulfiye, nice to see you back. Nice to see you here. Practice makes perfect. Ismit, that is exactly it. That's exactly it. Practice makes perfect. Yeah, excellent. Brilliant. And this is nice, yeah? Great. In the past, people usually... Ooh, people usually took, right? People usually took, in the past, photographs on special occasions. But nowadays, it is common everywhere, starting from parks to restaurants. Yeah, brilliant. Amanjot, great. Stuff like that is brilliant. Let me take out Ted Lasso. Let's keep focused on the model answers. So please write down a question that you've got uh, down below and I will pick one or two out. 
Facebook user, um, this question, can I ask if your formula is for your part three? Yes, yes, it is for part three, yes. Right, ooh. Okay, let's do this. This sounds like a part one question. Let's try this one from Helen. Um, I'll just copy this out. Thank you, Helen. And I'll put this up here. And then I'll put it up here. Great. What kind of photos do you prefer taking? That's a good question. I'm not sure I know. Right. Okay. Let's take Helen off for the moment. Um, I'll try and bring myself up <clears throat> to be the center of attention. <laughs> okay. So it's a part one question. So it's quite short. Um, what kind of photos do you prefer taking? <clears throat> well, I'm a bit of an amateur photographer and I, I really do like taking uh, different kinds of photos. But if I had to pick one kind, um, I think it would be different scenic views, right? Landscapes. I particularly like landscapes because I live um, near the countryside. I'm surrounded by nature. So I love to get out into the countryside and snap some mountains or rivers, something natural. That's the kind of photo I prefer taking. Right. Nice. Good. Great question. Thanks, Helen. Let's have a look. Any other questions? Questions on photos. Oh, you're all asking me different change questions. Photos. Right. Here's a good one. Oh, here's a great one. Here we've got a, a change and photos together. And this is a lovely question. Where did you get this? I like this question. The life. I think we would say change our lives, right? How have fo how have Photos, I'm just going to edit you. How have photos changed our lives nowadays? Great. Farshid, that's lovely. Okay. Hmm. Hmm. Right. Hmm. Okay. Um... Oh, gosh. Right. I think, well, photos, um, there are two things here, right? The way we take photos has changed, and then the impact it has had on our lives has changed. Um, I think the fact that we can take photos with our mobile phones and we can snap any moment very, very quickly and high quality has meant that nowadays um, we like to share high resolution photos with all of our friends and family and even people we don't know um, in a very easy way. So for example, I think nowadays people love taking shots of food. Typically you go into a restaurant and instead of just eating the food, you see people shooting the plate before they eat it. And they will even go to great lengths to set up the photo using symmetry or frames and even special filters to get the perfect photo and then send that to their friends. And so the way we eat actually has been impacted by the photos we take and the fact that, you know, we can take photos at the press of a button and uh, high resolution photos at that. There you go. Right, good. So you'll notice I use some of the template, but not perfect. It doesn't have to be the perfect template every time, but I can take bits that help me. The example really helped me get deeper there. I felt. <laughs> right, excellent. Um, I'm going to take one more quick question, a part one question, because that'll be quicker. Here you go. This is a nice question. 
How often do you take photos? Let's do this one. Great. Static Suja. Okay, this one will be nice and short, but good. How often do you take photos? To be honest, I think I take photos most days. Um, it's so easy nowadays just to take out, to whip out your phone uh, and to snap anything you see around you, whether it's food in a restaurant or a spontaneous moment when you're walking down the street. Um, and I love to capture those moments. Um, I always have my phone with me. So to be honest, yeah, I'm taking photos most days. Great. Fantastic. Okay, brilliant. Listen, guys, thank you very, very much for those questions. Um, all of these answers will be transcribed and in the notes, in the, the lesson notes later. Some really good questions, and I can see you're sharing some nice answers there as well. Mm -hmm. Right. We are running out of time. I'm sure there's lots more that we could say, but I'd like to finish up with a quick game of Kahoot, which will help us to practice the vocabulary just to review some of the vocabulary that we have seen today. If you're new, uh, welcome. Kahoot is a game we play together, so you need to play. You interact. You will need to go to the website www.kahoot.it. I'll show you in a minute. Or you can download the app on your phone and play there. If you can't get in, then just leave your comments. You can answer in the comment box as well. Okay, nice, great. So let me just get into Kahoot just one moment. Kahoot.com. I just need to find the game. Bear with me. Be patient. As always, I know you are. You guys are super patient. <clears throat> right, we've got one here somewhere. About so, I'm going to share the page with you. Okay, I'll just so you can follow me. I'm going to do teach. Um, I'll get out of the way for the moment. Let's do the classic game. So basically, get ready to join. You need to go to, um, can you see it here? www.kahoot.it. And now the volume. And put in the pin 6511338. Sign in, and we will start playing in a few moments. You have to put your name in. That's right. Brilliant. You can see it all there. We've got Twinkle, <laughs> Sweet, Rudyard Kipling is here again. Brilliant. Kate Middleton. Hello, Kate. Welcome. Royalty. Lovely. Janice is in. Great. So everyone's joining. Great. Jane, Jimmy, Osas, Reza. I'll just give you a couple of seconds to get in the room. Okay, great. You can still keep joining as we start the game. <clears throat> okay, photos. Let's do it. Question number one. I hate posing for photos. I'm just not at all blank. What do you think? And if you're not sure, you can put your comments, write your answer in the comments if you didn't get in the box in the game. Ragav, nice. Yay, yo, look at that. 88 of you got photogenic. Absolutely photogenic. Yep, remember the pronunciation of this one, photogenic. 
make that a longer one. Photogenic. Well done. Good. 88 of you. Let's move on. Scoreboard. You don't know who's top. Wait. Sid is top with Cookie second and hey, Arnold. <laughs> number three. Okay, question number two. This photo is too blurry. It's blank of focus. I'm expecting 100% right here. Everybody should get this right. Anybody gets it wrong, we'll have to leave the room. <laughs> A hundred and forty nine of you. That's not bad. It's pretty good, actually. It's out, out of focus, right? If the photo is too blurry, it's out of focus. Nice. Great. Those of you who got it wrong, <laughs> uh, don't worry. It's a learning opportunity, right? That's the whole point. This is to help you learn. The great thing about tests is they also help you learn. So where are we on the scoreboard? Sid is holding his own right up there, or her own, I don't know. Sarab has sneaked into second place, and hey, Arnold, still third. <laughs> right, next question, number three. Look, Brad Pitt is here. This is a great photo. Blank. Nice one, Albi. Syed, good. Nice one, Amina and Jasmine. You're in the comments box. Ah, oh, lovely photo opportunity. It's not a photo time. A great photo chance. Mm, possibly chance, but not really. The right collocation here. The most common is definitely photo opportunity. Well done. Let's check in our scoreboard. Sid is still there. And hey, Arnold is number two. Mary Brown. Lovely. Come in there at number three. OK, let's move on to the last question. This photo is too big. You need to blank it. This photo is too big. You need to blank it. So look carefully at the meaning here. What do you do if your photo is too big? Crop. Oh, look at that. Fantastic. Well done, guys. That's most of you got crop. Exactly. To crop is to cut the photo. Of course, you can capture a photo, pose for a photo. You can shoot a photo. But that doesn't make sense in this question. If it's too big, you need to crop the photo. To crop. Great. Crop. Love that word. Next, let's check in then the scoreboard. How did it finish up? Number three was, hey, Arnold. <laughs> Mary Brown stole second place, but El Cid. It's Cid. Well done. Nice one. Well done. First place. Fastest <laughs> and, and the top one. Well done. And I know some of you are saying, who's so slow? How do you get it so fast? I honestly don't know how it works. I really don't know. But there you go. That was it. <laughs> so lively, lively, lovely. Thank you very much. We have come to the end of the class. I hope today that you have learned lots of stuff about photos, um, how to talk about photos, photography, um, different collocations and different ways to answer questions, as well as some ideas about part three, right? And practice, practice, practice using these templates to help you speak naturally. Brilliant. 
Okay, do remember tomorrow, lucky draw day. If you're not on the Facebook group, come and join us. Um, come and join the group. Lots of stuff to learn and interact and practice, but also you get a chance to win the uh, Udemy course, IELTS Speaking Success, get a band seven, right? If you're on YouTube, do remember, subscribe to the channel, put in your uh, notifications button, and then you can get notifications of uh, videos as they come up. So this uh, Sunday will be a video about the future tenses. Ten different ways to talk about the future. Huh. Imagine that. That's going to be interesting. Brilliant. We're at the end, guys. Thank you very, very much. It's been a pleasure as always. I can't wait to see you next week. Um, and that's it. Take care, my friends, and have a lovely weekend. Cheerio now. Bye-bye.